So, game two, where things start getting very, very tense. It's a ZVZ, it's a team kill. It's like all the stars were aligned, everything's mirrored, it's crazy. Apart from the score. In the top left of Way Station, in the long spawn positions, we have, representing Vega Squadron, Hope. And his opponent, to the lower right, the Pink Zerg, representing Vega Squadron as well, Johnny Rico. Johnny Rico is 1-0 up in this best of three. One game away from advancing forward into the next round. And just a tiny bit closer to that qualification spot. Rico played in yesterday's qualifier as well, where he actually made it through to the quarterfinal game. He was literally one map away from qualifying. But Kerr beat him to the post, winning game number three. And take took the qualification spot. So Rico's going to be looking to match or better that performance today. Hope, I don't believe got that far in the qualifier yesterday, but I'd have to check that. Opening this game, hatch first from both players. Waystation is quite unique in that only diagonal spawns are possible, and one of those diagonal spawns makes it hugely macro orientated. We're two and a half minutes in, and the overlords are only just hitting the middle. So that makes it last forever. So hatch first, completely safe. If they'd spawned top right, bottom left, completely different story. The rush distances are suddenly pretty quick. And so you don't really want to be going for a hatch first in that situation. Anyway though, things looking good. Things looking safe. Gas, uh, hatch gas pull out of hope. Meanwhile, Rico just went hatch pull. Not going to be getting that gas down. Quite stylistic. Johnny Rico, not a big fan of going for a gas early on in ZVZ. Much prefers gasless openings. Hope seems to be pretty happy with how things are going. I've also just noticed, glancing over at my stream chat, that some of you naughty naughty people have added a new command for my Twitch chatbot called exclamation mark K, which makes Nightbot reply with a kappa face. Can you be trusted with nothing? This is why we can't have nice things, people. <sighs> no, it's actually awesome. Well done. Whoever did that, you deserve a medal. Um, so yeah, back to this game. If anyone's watching on YouTube, you won't get that. So you should have watched on the stream because it's awesome here. Two links. They're going to be making their way across for hope. Meanwhile, Rico, he has got two links out slightly sooner. This must be a very tiring journey. Running all the way across the map. On way station in these spawns. Look at how long it takes the lings. Even speed lings would take forever. The lings meet in the middle. Oh, Rico takes the first damage. He was on move command, not attack command. Will it make a difference though? Probably not. Again, Baneling Nest from Hope. He got it down last game, but didn't really utilize it at all. But continuing on mining up that gas. In comes the lings for Rico, but he didn't actually see anything. Uh, so he doesn't really know that any of this exists. The spine though coming down regardless, and a big zergling, a good or a big speedling baneling play would be pretty strong on way station. Because while the rush distances are huge, the natural is really wide. It's hard to block all of this off. It'd take at least two spines to cover all the area. Not what Hope's gonna be gunning for though. He's got his lair morphing. If he was gonna be going for a big zergling baneling play, he'd be already pumping those speedlings and wouldn't be bothering with the lair. The reason it isn't just like a super cool move to make with this wide open natural. And the reason this really wide natural is balanced is because the rush distance is so long. The only way you could viably do this is to get a lot of speedlings out early and start them running because they take a so, so long to get across there. Anyway, hatch down. Link's coming out on both sides. It's actually Rico who appears to be preparing the big speedling baneling play as he is adding in a good number. He's down a considerable number of drones. Hope, though, where is his overlord? He, okay, he saw, like, a flash of lings. Another little flash of lings again. But did he realize? He's got four lings on the way, but he's going for a spire. This could be a problem. Okay, Hope's 16 lings. He knows this is coming now. He sees it in the middle. He needs, this is going to be ling, bane ling micro to the max. It's going to be so intense. If Hope defends it, he's in an amazing spot. And with the spire coming down, Rico is in, like, an awful spot. 
But the speedlings are here. The banelings don't exist yet. They're trying to come through as quickly as they can. A queen getting duked out, but hope he's got enough to defend. He just slaughtered that incredibly well. Rico, he lost 21 zerglings this game so far. And now what does he do about the spire? He knows it's coming, so that's the advantage, that he's aware that it's there. Of course, a counterattack going to be coming in for hope. Rico should be able to see it any second, sees it coming. But does he have enough to defend? He's getting out some more lings of his own. But for the moment, he's only got 13 there. Nice baneling hit, though. Keeps things safe. Going to keep the queen safe as well. That's busy trying to take out that overseer. Third base up for Rico a lot earlier than Hope. So that's where his advantage comes. The disadvantage, though, is the fact that the Spire is about to finish. Six Mutalisks, pretty much, going to be on their way immediately. And Rico doesn't have any anti-air at the moment. Still, we see these lings backing on out. The Baneling, a terrifying threat. But Rico, not adding any spores yet, I'm surprised, because he has certainly seen it. He knows 100% that the Spire was coming. So he needs to be prepared. A lot of lings coming to counterattack now for Rico, heading down towards that third base. If he didn't know about the Mutus, he 100% does now, because they're attacking one of his overseers. Nice little wraparound on this third hat. It's going to be forced to cancel. There's just too many lings there. And that is a massive pickoff because Rico's third, as I mentioned, already down. Incredibly, incredibly important. Now, counter-attack though. And this is where hope is going to get so much fun. Because he's going to be looking to try and shut this down. The muters are very important in this situation. The two queens are there, but not with enough energy to transfuse each other. And right there, Rico GG's out. He knows he's not going to be able to stop it. And I, I don't understand why he didn't get down any spores to try and stop that. Anyway, that was game number two. It's leveled out 1-1 now. And we're going to be getting the ace game.